My father was born in Russia. My mother is a native-born American. And um, my mother was a very uh, heavy young woman, although very beautiful. And my father was a very small man. My mother was not a small woman. And they had met uh, prior to World War I. And uh, my father was quite taken with her. But they only knew each other uh, peripherally. He went to war World in War. World War I in order to obtain citizenship. He left Russia not to serve in the Tsars or army, and he came here and he served in the American army. During the time that he was in service, he wrote to my mother. My mother wrote to him. We found their letters many years after they were gone. And it started out, Dear Friend Aaron, and it ended up, Darling Aaron. When he came home in 1920, uh, a love affair began. They married in 1921. I never saw two more ill-suited people. And consequently, they had two daughters. My father had been gassed in France, mustard gassed. And when he returned, he had postpartum, whatever you call it, and he began going to doctors, and to the Veterans Administration. And they began filling him with pills. He never met a pill he didn't like. He never gave one up. And each one that they added, he added to his collection and took. So our childhood was spent with a, a man that would have, I can't term them fits, but it was very um, volatile. Did you and your sister become closer? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We were best friends, sisters, and we protected one another. Did your mom talk to you guys at all about it? My mother was the most buttoned up person. That generation was. Yes. If she had ever been able to say what was in her heart, I think she would have fallen apart. Yeah. She was a lovely person. Everyone thought that she was such a lady, and she was. I had one aunt who was, but she didn't live here. She lived first in Akron and then in California. But I was her favorite. And so she would send bits and pieces of things and notes to me and so forth. Um, so Harriet and I did not have a very pleasant uh, childhood. And as we got a little older, we made our own fun, so to speak. Um, and then I had the opportunity. I started to school at four and a half. In those years, you started in January, if you wanted. 
but I, my, my sister and I were only 20 months apart. So when I went to school, I was a year and a half behind her. Well, uh, at elementary school, they allowed you to go to summer school and pick up that half year. So when I entered high school, I became just one year behind her. And then most of our friends were the same, and so everything was kind of intermingled, and we became closer yet. In fact, my sister dated my husband before I did. <laughs> um, he didn't tell us that. I know he didn't. <laughs> he left that for me. Uh, they, uh, we had a cousin who lived in Sioux City, Iowa, and they all belonged to the some Jewish group. I don't recall which one it was. I was too young. I was just 14. They were 15 and 16. And they went to Milwaukee. And Dave had a date with my sister. And that's how he met her. And when they came to Sioux City, and Dave and I met at my cousin's house. He dated my sister again. And they got me a date, and Dave was with me on my first date. And he also gave me my first kiss. How did you take him away from your sister, and how was she with that? <laughs> my sister had a boyfriend in Omaha. And when Dave wrote me a postcard from Black the Black Hills, where he and his boyfriends went on, and they had dropped one of the boy's sisters with us, and he wrote a postcard, and on the bottom it said, P.S., Jerry, wait for me. So Harriet said, oh, that's great. I'll go back. I want to go back and, and have a date with Bob. I have a date with Bob on the weekend. I called my father and asked if I could stay a little longer. Because every, every summer we spent two weeks with my cousin in Sioux City, Iowa. And he said, yeah, I could stay you know, because I took the bus back. It didn't make any difference. And I waited for him. And when he came back, he kissed me on their porch. And he scared me, and I ran in the house, and us three girls were all sharing the same bed. And I dived in the bed, and I missed the bed, and I hit the floor. And I woke the house, and everybody came running to see what was wrong. So that's how I really came to write him every day. So now, did your sister wind up with Bob? No, she didn't. But she was okay that you wound up with Dave? She was delighted. She always adored him. She called him her brother. Right. We were extremely close. Yeah. Now, you guys were married, and he was in the service. Was there a fear that you had going that he might have to go overseas? What were you, your thoughts? You know, I was 19 years old, and I didn't worry about it. I was so thrilled to be married, to be out of my house, to be with the man that I really fantasized about, and loved five years of writing letters every single day and getting them fairly often in return, I felt that I knew him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to this day, I love the man. 
Oh, I wanted to leave Milwaukee. Do you know what it's like to live in a flat with seven people and one bathroom? Especially when your bed is in the dining room and everybody's walking back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> what was the happiest time in your life? Probably the happiest time of my life was at my youngest grandson's wedding when I had my children my grandchildren, my sister's children, all together in one place. Do you remember the first time you got a television set? Oh, do I. It was in Leavenworth, Kansas, and we got our bonus from the government. In and it, we got a Dumont. It was beautiful. And all the neighbors came and we set up folding chairs. And it was like a theater. And the screen was this big. Now, do you remember when, did your family always have a telephone in the house when you were growing up? Yes. Was it a party line? No. It was Jackson 2468. <laughs> but when you picked it up the phone, there was nobody else sharing it no, with you? No, we, we always had a, had private, a private line. line. Okay. We had no problem with, uh, like, Dave's family because my father was 100% handicapped from the war. And every month he got a check. Plus, he had the forethought to take out a, an insurance policy that paid him so much a month for disability. So we did not feel that pinch like Dave's family did. And we always had a car, a Chevrolet. Now in your lifetime, you've lived through so many momentous occasions. Of course, World War II. Uh, JFK assassination, Martin Luther King assassination, the moon landing in 69, something good, the tragedy of 9-11. Is there something on the national scene that just stood out in your mind that you remember exactly where you were, what you were doing? I remember um, December 7th, 1941, as though it's yesterday. Did you hear Roosevelt on the radio? I was sitting in Central High Auditorium. I was 15 years old, and I listened to his speech. Scary time? It was like the world was falling apart, like a puzzle. It was just cracking. You and David have the two boys and the four grandkids. What advice does grandma have for the next generation? For my grandsons, I would say, stay with what your heart tells you is right. And for my granddaughters, I'm going to say, just be happy and know yourselves and do what you makes you happy. If you can't be happy, nobody can you make happy. That's great advice. Good job. Thanks for doing this.